Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today we're going to take some scrap wood and turn it into a beautiful Harley Davidson sign. So let me take you along and let's get started. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to log on to the internet. So Tribal Art Harley Davidson. Let's see what that brings up. They usually have pretty pretty good details when you when you do tribal art. And let's go images. Now I'm not a good painter, so I gotta be careful what I get here. Make sure I get something that that's that's what I want right there. Harvey in logo. Okay, let's go back into Vectric and we're gonna hit OK on the material. Go up here to import bitmap and let's go find the logo right there. We'll go ahead and open that up. Now hopefully the details on this will be good. So I'm gonna go over here to tra trace bitmap and preview and hit apply close that out we'll go over here and delete the picture and we're going to zoom in and see how bad it is and actually actually it looks good so let's go ahead and highlight it we're not going to have to do anything to it sometimes you do sometimes they're they're kind of a mess but this one looks really good that's why i i tend to do the tribal art like if you look at it you, there's no extra stuff in there we're going to go ahead and verify that's in the center and close. Now we're going to go over to our tool pass. Now I'm going to V carve this. So let's see what we need to do. We need to ungroup this and we need to group everything on the inside. We'll group all that stuff and the outside one should be already grouped. Okay. All right. So now we're going to highlight the inside stuff, go over to V carve. We're not using a clearance tool, we're just using a 1502. Start depth will be zero, and everything else can stay the same. Let's put our bit number in there, 1502. I'll show you a picture right here. Calculate. Let's preview it, and that looks really good. Okay, so that's good. So let's close that, we'll go back over to 2D. Now we're gonna highlight this outside one, and we're going to do a profile to a path. We'll go ahead and use this eighth inch bit again. And we're going to go down an inch and we'll keep everything the same. We don't need tabs because it's not going to go through. But we'll go ahead and put the number 4616 and hit calculate and preview. And you see that cut down through. So we'll, we'll be able to go and cut this and then run it through our profiler. Okay, let's close that and I'll see you over at the machine. The first thing I need to do, I'm gonna make this sign out of scrap two by fours. So I'm over here at the Grizzly Joiner and I'm joining all sides of the two by fours. Next, I get some uh, material to protect the, the table from the glue and I get these things ready to glue up. I'm using tight bond glue, the blue label, and I'll leave a description. I then spread all the glue out, and you'll see the, those two steel bars that I have underneath there. I use those for calls, and that keeps, the, that keeps it perfectly flat. And that seems to be working pretty good. Once I get it clamped down flat, I then use my pipe clamps, and I clamp this thing together. I use five pipe clamps on it, and then I take it over to the CNC room, and I proceed to run a surfacing program. And here I'm using the, I'm still using these Rockler uh, T-Track clamps. And they've been working pretty good. As long as you make sure to know where your bit's going, traveling. So what I did in this program is I offset a half inch off the material. And that allowed it to surface this without, without running into the clamps. Right here I do the X, Y, Z. Obviously it's a little more work if you're using a bunch of scrap wood like I am to make these signs. But I wanted to show you that you could just take some two by fours and, and create something nice out of them. And since I do have a big giant pile of two by fours and a lot of time on my hands this winter, I, I thought it'd be fun to make stuff out of those. So right here I'm running a program an eighth inch deep uh, pass and it looks like that's all it'll need because when you use the calls um, it, it flattens it out pretty good. So I'm gonna I'm basically gonna surface each side before I start the program to cut the sign. 
That way I know it's really nice and flat. And I have two programs already lined up. One of them's an eighth inch and one of them's a quarter inch. But I ended up just running the eighth inch one on each side. And this little bit that I'm using, this is a 6210 three bladed one inch bit from Whiteside. And I'll show you a picture right here. And it does a really nice job. It's super smooth. Right there, I clean the table off and just flip it over in the same spot. And I can actually just hit the and just run the program. Don't have to do any XYZ. And there it finishes up. Next up, I, I seal the material. And my idea was to try the aura mask again, but, it, but I was unsuccessful. Um, but I then roll it. I painted, the, I painted it black after I put the zinser on, which probably was the mistake. And then I rolled it on really tight with this roller and made sure to cover up all the little pieces and it didn't have any air gaps in it. So it was pretty tight on there. I then put it back in the same spot, but this time I was thinking of cutting all the way through. So I put this piece of masonite. I didn't end up doing that though. But right here I get it clamped down real nice and tight with these T-Rock or these Rockler T-Track clamps. And I'll show you a picture of these clamps right here. I've got two different clamps. I've got these cam clamps, which you see me messing with right there. Those are cam clamps. And they work really well, actually. And then I have the, the, the other ones on the other side, which are um, a T-Track clamp. And then I, right here, I'm in installing. I home out the machine. And then I install the V-Bit. And this is a 1502 by Whiteside. And I'll show you a picture of it right here. I'm doing right here, I'm doing the XYZ with the V-bit, and then I run the program. And I could tell right away that the aura mask just was not sticking very good. I think what I have to do is I have to paint the material, then put a sealer on top of the paint, and then try it again. Leave a description, leave a comment if you, if you know what I'm doing wrong. But the sign, the V-carve, was really coming out nice. I could tell that it was doing a really good job. I then switched to a 46176 from Amana. This is an eighth inch profiling tool. And then I run a program to cut it out. Now I ended up not cutting all the way through, um, but it did give me a, a good reference point to cut it out on the bandsaw. Right there, it's going around the whole thing. And it's only cutting about a half inch deep actually. And this material is about an inch and a quarter. Here's another view of it, cutting out the V-carve, and you can see the aura mask just peeling away. I've only had success with the aura mask one time, actually, out of about five times. So I'm not sure how, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. But I learn something new every day, that's for sure. I thought this sign actually came out really good. It was a little hard to paint because of the aura mask. Um, I ended up doing a lot of hand painting, but I thought it turned out really nice. Here's a different view of the the profile cut with the Amana tool. It's amazing what you can do with this machine. I mean, it'll do whatever you tell it to do. And there it is. Next up, I hook up my Grizzly bandsaw and I proceed to cut this thing out. Now, I don't think I'm gonna do this anymore. I think I'm gonna get a profile tool that's deep enough and make sure that I cut all the way through these things. I think it'll come out cleaner. It did come, this sign came out nice, but uh, you know, there's no reason to have to do this when you have a machine that can just do it and just go straight down through. But it's all the learning curve for sure. And getting the right bits. I don't, right now I don't have a, a profile bit that'll cut an eighth inch that deep, but I am going to get one for sure. And right now there's a big buck sitting outside my office window laying in the, in the grass out there. I'll show you a picture. Once I get it all jigsawed out or, or bandsawed out, I take it over to my profiling, my Jesm router lift, and I have a profile tool, and I set it up and run this thing through the profile tool. Hook up my dust right dust collection, get some power, and run it through there. Once I get done running it through the profiler, I hook up my uh, rigid sander, oscillating sander on my flip top cart, and I take it over there and sand it. After I get it all sanded, I then... Um, take a router and I do a little quarter round around the top and bottom. Next up, I clean off the table and get it ready to paint. My painting skills are not good, so I end up spending quite a bit of time painting. Um, I end up going over it and yeah, it takes me a little time. The center letters on the Harley-Davidson sign, I'm doing white and then the 
bottom and top letters I'm doing red and then the 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 base of the sign is black. Thanks for watching this episode of Outlaw Woodworking. I hope you liked the episode of the Harley Davidson sign. I uh, even though I I didn't have any luck with the um, your mask, it still came out really good. You just have to spend a lot more time, you know, doing the detailed painting and the letters. But yeah, I thought it came out pretty good. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and I will see you next time. Later.